So then we're going to move into the second gallery on our second floor um, where the show continues and these uh, works by Mary T. Smith, um, who, uh, you know, was an artist who I think, as we said earlier, maybe started making work late in life. And it seemed to be inspired by this pile of corrugated metal that she began to piece by piece, you know, turn into um, these kind of figurative paintings. Is that right, Philip? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think she, well, I think she, she was driven, um, she was driven to paint, uh, particularly, she made a few sculptures, very few, but um, she was driven to paint, and that was the material that was most readily available, quite simply, uh, old boards, and then, of course, corrugated tin, and she used them to decorate, she had this incredible aesthetic where all the, everything was painted white, and, of course, the background in Mississippi, everything's this bright green, so, um, and then she had access to basic paint colors too that people didn't want anymore. So, you know, you have mostly green, brown, green, brown, red, black, et cetera. And not until way later in life did uh, Mr. Arnett again provide her with a, an account at the hardware store and, and then she could go buy whatever she wanted. Uh, and Guy, the did guy you... would, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Philip. I was just going to, I was just going to let Guy speak because he met her in the mid 80s I remember yeah. With yeah those are my some of my pictures from her place um, and I, unfortunately uh, much like Henry Dorsey who was the first uh, outsider artist I photographed back in the early 70s I guess um, outside of Louisville Brown, Brownsboro but like Mr. Dorsey uh, Mary T. Smith had had uh, a stroke or two and couldn't speak. And, but she, like Mr. Dorsey, led us around and pointed to things and we would say, well, this and that and that, and she'd nod her head or smile. And she was lovely uh, to be with. And it was just regrettable that we couldn't hear her story from her. And, and what were some of these kind of reoccurring motifs? I mean, what, what, what were some of the things that she would, you know, kind of articulate or talk about or communicate about what? Jesus, Jesus and the apostles. And I mean, that's what she's talking Those about. Those are the apostles yeah. behind her right there, you know? Mm -hmm. They look like John, Paul, George, and Ringo and, you know, Eric Clapton. But uh... and what's the story? <laughs> like she, she lived near a major roadway, right? And there was a billboard and somehow maybe the idea came from you know, the idea that people were passing by, like she was trying to kind of maybe communicate with, it. was that, is that part of what maybe, maybe stimulated? It, it was a kind of proselytizing for sure. Um, uh, then there'd be signs like dog, dog bark out back, uh, you know, warnings to, to stay out. <laughs> well, I think um, she's somebody that had like a lot, like Joe Light and some other people will talk about later, just had a fundamental need to communicate. And so she, so she did, and when you look, for example, uh, that she would communicate visually even with the way she dressed. So she would coordinate her outfits with the things that she was making. <laughs> That's and, a great dress. I mean, she, she was really, wow. um, really ahead of her time. And, and a lot of different people that, you know, you might have heard about people like uh, Basquiat, et cetera, uh, you know, referenced her as a, uh, not necessarily as an inspiration, but as an influence for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's tapping into, I mean, from, it comes from a different standpoint, but, you know, where Basquiat may have tapped into some, some um, cultural and kind of modernist kind of references, I mean, she started tapping into these with, from much different sources. 